Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. In a world where diversity and inclusion have seemingly become buzzwords, our next guest has done her part to make them a reality, specifically in the toy aisle. Please welcome Dr. Lisa Williams. Yay. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Yes, thanks for being here today. Yeah. Oh. Your hair is beautiful. Yes. I know. Oh, my. Gorgeous. You know, I can't take complete credit for it. <laughs> I have an amazing glam yeah, squad here. How about it? Good, good, you got it all going now. Now, talk to us about why do you personally feel that it is important for little black children to see themselves reflected in their toys? Because they can do anything, but you have to see it. You have to see it in terms of representation. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about it from a personal level. Now, I ended up getting, uh, being the first African-American female to get a PhD from the Ohio State University yes. in Marketing yes. and Logistics. Mm, yes. Who cool. that? Yes. <laughs> With Black History. Yes. Um, and not only that, then I went on to become the first female to get tenure African American at Pennsylvania State University. Yes. It's all going to make wow. sense in a minute. Yes. Okay. Yes. Work with me. Work with me, sisters. Work with me, sisters. Work with me, sisters. It's going to make sense in a minute. And then I became the highest ranking professor in my field, bar race, gender, ethnicity. I was yes. the highest ranking person in my field. Right. Right. People who, yeah. Okay. I saying. was given a multi million dollar endowed chair to conduct research, not once but twice. Mm -hmm. Okay, now why all that's important? It's because I'm a woman who had low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how did someone who didn't think they were worthy ended up creating or accomplishing so much? Yeah. Because I saw it. I began to see and believe that it was possible. Yes. Representation matters. And when I was teaching in my classrooms, I saw beautiful women come in that didn't have high self-esteem. And so I knew that starting when they were younger would help to empower them. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons I started doing the dolls. Wow. So I know from personal experience the power of representation yeah. and positive play. Yes. And, yeah. and you're doing something about it. I love that with the dolls. So how are they helping young boys and girls with their self-esteem and self-empowerment? You know, every doll that we create is designed to do just that. So I make sure that every skin tone is custom blended. Oh, uh, so pretty. Oh, oh, so there's so my baby. Cool. My yes. babies. <laughs> Beautiful. If I had a daughter, she'll definitely have that. <laughs> <laughs> she would literally she would have that one. Yeah. The, no, she'll have the entire oh, the whole collection. collection. Yes. Well, you gotta yeah. have the collection because every friends. skin tone. Well, yeah, you gotta have the friends. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. But the skin tones are all custom blended too. Every wow. sculpt is different. Right? Oh, cool. So I want to make sure that every child really does see their beauty reflected back to them. That's so beautiful. traditionally, companies have taken one sculpt, mm -hmm. usually it was a very popular mm -hmm. Caucasian sculpt, mm -hmm. right? And then they took and put some brown paint on it mm -hmm. and maybe a pink lip and they said, here you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's your African American mm -hmm. doll. Mm -hmm. That is not representing of our beauty. Well, I'm yes. so happy that you're doing that because I can remember when I was younger, I grew up in the 80s, and when I was younger, it was very tough to kind of find mm -hmm. a, a black Barbie doll or a black baby doll. Mm -hmm. I think I think maybe I found one with Cabbage Patch. Maybe I did. Mm -hmm. Cabbage, Patch, mm -hmm. Cabbage Patch had a black yes. baby, didn't it? Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. But, it, but it, was, it, it was plentiful in terms of like all the white dolls and everything, but you would only maybe find two or three out of this big aisle. It was one yeah. Barbie. One, it was and like one she Barbie, two Barbies. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't that cute. She wasn't. She wasn't that cute. Because no. it was based on a different mold, which exactly. didn't look like us. So exactly. now she's cute. Yes. But well, it was like well. she said, it was that cutout and then it was just paint. Yeah. yeah. Like, so the hair was still very silky. Right. That's not indicative of who we are. Exactly. And she was just a, a white barb doll with brown color. Exactly. exactly. So now we get to see it in all, oh, all shapes and oh, sizes shapes. and hair texture yes. and all of that. Mm -hmm. You got um, it. You know, a, a recent report has come out that uh, racism and bias uh, leads to the increase of discipline with black girls in our schools. We see that. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that and how, what can we do? Even though we're not in the schools, we have children in the schools, mm -hmm. I have daughters in the schools. What do we need to do to change it? You know, we know from living in this society as well as statistics, right? How we are represented, mm -hmm. we know that. How, what we can do is what you're doing. <clears throat> Communicate, share the information, let everyone know. And then also, as parents, to empower our children at home. Indeed. Continue to instill in them the truth of who they are. Yes. And that's why the toys are helpful because I want to create a toolbox for parents. Mm -hmm. So you can have books, so you can have toys for kids. So they know who they are. So even though society may try to tell you something different, 
you gonna know, mm -hmm. right? My mama, my daddy, my aunts, my grandmama, they told me who I am. Mm -hmm. So that empowerment helps to change things and how people see themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we know that the treatment of black girls can be a bit harsh, absolutely, right? Uh, so why do you think or do you think there's different standards of beauty when it comes down to African-American women versus mm -hmm. our other counterparts? That's mm -hmm. a good question. That is true. an excellent question. And here's what I'm going to say to you. I think that's changing, right? Look, a, look at this. <laughs> you think it's changing? <laughs> okay. It's it changing. For the better. It is changing for the better. We're seeing it. I mean, again, the dolls are helping to do that. You guys represent mm -hmm. our beauty and our ethnicity and our empowerment. That makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So it's changing. I yes, think absolutely. we're single-handedly, as an African-American uh, race and people, we are changing it. We that's are. what I'm we're saying. We're putting the voice out there in yes. terms of stating what is our beauty. Yep. We're not allowing anybody, anybody else to tell us what's beautiful. That's what and beautiful. Fact, we're so amazing. Now we got them trying to be like us. <laughs> Hello. We're going to have more with Dr. Lisa. <laughs> we want you to stay over for the last break. We'll be right back with more with Dr. Lisa. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We have more with Dr. Lisa Williams. So, Dr. Lisa, how can we support by buying the dolls? What, what, what do we need to do to purchase these dolls? Where do we go get them? You can get them at Walmart. Mm. Yes. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about Walmart. You know, I know you have your PhD in business. I really want to talk to you about the steps that a person can go from having a concept to actually having something tangible and getting it into the masses, the mainstream business, like your Walmart, your Targets, your Walgreens. <laughs> what did you do? That is a great question. And it takes person. Well, first of all, it takes a why. Why am I doing it? And I'm doing it for the little girls. That's got the two passion. To tell us. And I then the then it's about living that dream. Walmart actually just did a an ad on me talking wow. about how I transitioned from being a professor to being a doll entrepreneur. And it's actually running online right now. Wow. So I'm starting to talk about how you can become a supplier and live your dreams. What, were you ever discouraged or saying like, you know what, this meeting I got to get ready for, and you know, it like, seemed a little shaky the first two meetings so what kept you going my passion the why the why the little girls and the little boys that's the why Man. that's what kept me going Wow something so what is next for you dr. Lisa I mean you've accomplished so much what do you want to see for dr. Lisa this amazing empowered woman I love that question <laughs> you've been turning up at this table yeah. okay <laughs> What I want to do, I'm still so dedicated to our children, our boys and our girls, and what I want to continue to do is more products for them. I want to do a lifestyle brand, so wherever they are, they see themselves reflected back to them. Good. And what's been the response? Thing. like? Oh my things? God, the kids, are, their eyes light up because they see Aww. themselves. The parents and the grandparents come up and give me hugs and kisses, and that's what makes the difference. Absolutely. Please follow Dr. Lisa on Instagram at the Dr. Lisa to keep up with all the fresh dolls. Thank you, Dr. Lisa. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Yes.